Yeah. <laughs> My bad. What's good, by the way? We got with never reaction video. Okay, today we got the mom knew it all. Phineas and Ferb theory. Now, I don't think we reacted to a theory on this channel, you know what I'm saying? So, this is going to be the first one, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We're going to share into this shit, bro. We're going to see what, what the mom knew. What's good? Flynn Fletcher? That was their name? Damn. Turns out she knew exactly what was going on with Phineas and Ferb's inventions, but she pretended to be in the dark the entire time, as she had no interest in busting them. Au contraire, she actually needed them to commit to their projects and build their machines, much to Candice's exasperation. But let's proceed one step at a time, shall we? Throughout their 104 days long summer, Phineas and Ferb have been building the most ginormous contraptions in their backyard, yet the Rats. mother seemed to be clueless the entire time. Candace tried to show her mom the truth all summer long, bringing her back home to witness her brother's inventions, yet Linda never believed her daughter, as she never saw any of those contraptions. That does seem to be a pattern, doesn't it? One might think that's tough. aware of her son's crazy stunts, but is she really? If you answered yes, then you're not paying attention. Even though Linda was well aware of Candace's attempt to expose her brothers, she just believed her daughter had a very active imagination, which is That's... a very weird conclusion in and of itself. That's not a weird conclusion. That seems very, uh, Apart from very reasonable, honestly. Explanations, Phineas and Ferb are in the gadgets of the Aegis exhibit, and they're doing something to this chair thing, and Ferb is sitting there hosting it. Maybe she's just crazy. That sooner or later, somebody, anybody, would bring up Venus and Ferb's inventions in a conversation with Linda, since literally everybody in Danville witnessed or even took part in Venus and Ferb's adventures one way or the other. Just think of episodes like Two Winter, Flop Stars, Backyard Aquarium, Cheer Up Candace, or Ferb Latin, where basically the entire town was involved and the boys ended up on the news as well. She may have doubts about the accuracy of Candace's stories, but it's pretty unlikely that not even a single soul ever stopped Lynn on the street commenting on her kids' contraptions. That do make sense. That's a handful. What? Plus, from time to what? time, Phineas and Ferb were also joined by Linda's husband and parents, who actually got to be an active part of the boys' I never seen, uh, when they build a roller rink. I never seen this one. Have a roller skating rematch actually, no, I have. Or when Lawrence took a ride on their flying carpet, the replica of their grandpa's biplane. Oh, I want to go on a flying carpet. To help Candace with their driver's license. It's pretty rational to think that So they built a fucking track to help Candace get her, her fucking driver's license, but she still want to snitch? Oh, fucking sister. Questions about our children. I mean, the scenario in which nobody does would seem pretty far fetched. And don't forget about the times the inventions did not disappear and stayed in the backyard all day and night for everyone to see. She only had to put all the pieces together, and at some point, she did. As to all of these witnesses and this evidence right under her nose, we can add some actual proof. Take the episode Agent Duke, when Phineas and Ferb turned into babies, and Candace sent her mom a picture of them in the backyard. <laughs> Linda knew perfectly that a picture of the two of them together as babies couldn't exist, as Phineas and Ferb already were toddlers when their parents first met. So Linda acted as if it was an old baby picture just to leave it as that. Oh, that's crazy. When Candace brought the babies to her, she insisted that those weren't Phineas and Ferb, but just two babies who looked like them. But again, she That's another reasonable fucking shit. knows how her son looked like as a baby. Plus, if she recognized him in the picture, then she must recognize him in person as well. She denies, denies and denies, even with evidence all over the place. She probably gets some good. I mean, what? My bad. For some reason, she decided to keep it all under wraps. She didn't want her children to know she knew, so she kept denying the obvious and act dumb all the time, never really pointing out the weird stuff happening around her. Interesting. Get pink hair. You don't have to wear some weird door. What the fuck? So now the real question is why? Why would she pretend not to know a thing? I don't know. The truth from her family and from Candace of all people. Oh, maybe it's because she was fucking with what's the card, bro? Fucking with that nigga, uh. Wait, how are they fucking. I thought. What? I'm so confused on this whole situation. Linda's never around when Candace is right there ready to bust her brothers. However, when Candace is somehow unable to bust, when she's just hanging out with someone else, somewhere else, for example, Linda just chills around the house. Candace can't get out of bed because of her injured ankle. Let's do some gardening next to the boys' giant machine. That's actually crazy. With Jeremy in the park, Linda stays inside the house all day. 
Candace is not willing to bust her brothers because she's taking part in their obstacle course. So because she's taking what type of chaos happening right outside the kitchen window. Instead, when Candace is willing to expose her brothers, no matter how hard she tries, Linda will always find a way to miss the big contraption and avoid admitting to know the truth. But mom, they're abusing their liberty. Don't you find that ironic? Not enough to act upon right now, dear. But why the hell would she do that? I don't know. I answered that question with another question. What job do Phineas and Ferb's parents do for a living? I don't know. They run an antique store. And I want you oh, to yeah, yeah. They run an antique store. That might be the second worst business right after being a YouTuber who makes animated shows related content. Those guys need so much support. You can't really provide for a five person family, a pet platypus, and afford such a house if both parents work at an antique store. Where would they even get the money for their trips, their vacations? Yo, maybe they got a good ass fucking antique store. For spa days or even donating to charity. It seems plausible that both Homer Simpson and Stan Smith are able to support five people, a couple pets, and aliens of every kind, working at a nuclear power plant and for the CIA respectively. And even with a pretty good job, the Simpsons often barely make it to the end of the month. So how can a family like the Flynn Fletchers rely on antiques and nothing else? And remember that if Linda's pretending to be in the dark, then it means that Phineas and Ferb keep for themselves all the money they might make with their inventions. So what other way can the family earn money then? I don't know. Good answer, it's a cartoon, who cares? Long answer, That's what I would oh, think. I hope your tinfoil hat is tight enough. In the episode Phineas and Ferb get busted, Linda mentions that she keeps a journal of all the crazy stories Candace tells her, intending to use them for stand-up comedy. Now, since that episode is a dream inside yet another dream inside a pretty convoluted plot, we have no way of knowing whether Linda really does have those journals or if it was just part of her dream. Still, it got me thinking, what if Linda actually exploited Candace's psychotic rants, writing them down in a couple books in order to sell her stories? Or perhaps she uses Candace's stories in order but to... But we would have known that. ...dealing with high-strung teenagers, considering how that's the topic her favorite author writes about. However, to me, oh, okay. their mother is simply writing down each and every single story Candace tells her because she always wants her daughter's drama, her rants, and her storytelling. Think of the time she literally just sat there, refusing to go check out what the boys built in the garage until Candace came up with a coherent and detailed story about it. This would explain why Linda always encourages her daughter to spend time with her brothers, despite knowing that the boys' contraptions will end up driving Candace crazy at the end of the day. Yes, fuck. They devised a fun way to wash the house. Why don't you join them? Have some fun for a change. So after Candace spends an entire day following her brother's every step, keeping her mom up to speed in the meantime, Linda can easily transcribe her rants, sell, and use her stories to her advantage. This well, who did she sell it to? Hobbies and her off-the-wall classes. Thanks, Vivian. See you Tuesday for totem pole carving. As well as totem pole carving for the family trips. And consequently, this is why Linda never really got mad at Candace for her habit of tattling about her brother's mysterious inventions. Because you'd think a responsible parent would tell her to stop that. One could also argue that Linda creates the drama herself, purposefully leaving the house every day just to let Phineas and Fur build whatever thing they want. Maybe Candace, who will later tell her mom about their misadventures. What are your brothers up to? Not a thing. Which is weird. Honestly, if people found somewhat reasonable the idea of Linda selling the stories of her dead daughter to Disney to make this show, then this theory is 100 What the fuck is that? How does she do that though? How can Linda be so sure of the invention's disappearance? Because the moment Candace exposes her brothers, everything is over and Linda's plan goes down the drain. I'd say that. Just like Phineas and Ferb openly stated that they don't care how the inventions always disappear, they're just glad they do because it saves them time and helps uh... them and gain as much time as possible just to let the inventions disappear on their own because she knows that at some point they will. As you know, oh, I thought she was going to fucking sell them or something. That would be more, more sense to me. To avoid looking at the big idea before it's taken away. She knows it's just a matter of time. You know, Candace, this is the second time I've climbed up there. I'm already down half a dress size. Come on! And in case the thing doesn't disappear, she just makes up some weird excuse to avoid checking it out. The time machine is gone! Mom? Oh, hi, Candace. Mom? Mom! Look, Candace, they're putting a new boat on display. Oh, you missed it again! While in extreme circumstances, when she just cannot make up excuses anymore, she simply plays the innocent and goes like, You guys did that? Oh, that's adorable. 
Wait, no it is not. This way, she doesn't have to bust anyone and the routine can go on going on, while at the same time, her plan can keep going. Come on, in the episode about the future, when present Candace finally busts Phoenix and Ferb to future Linda, she's like, The fuck should I fight off for? 20 years of madness, it turns out that you've been telling the truth all along. Neat. Anyone want some pie? Okay, I added the pie part, but you've got to admit that this is not how you would react when you find out that the daughter you've been considering crazy for decades was actually telling the truth from day one. You never know. My friend was killed because of something monstrous that he had seen. We're accused of killing someone. We can get out. Now, let's take a look at the future, <laughs> keeping in mind what we just learned, and let's see if this theory actually works. These are a few examples, but technically you can do this for dozens of other episodes as well. In Lot Salakes, knowing that Phoenix and Ferb are away at the senior lodge, Linda pushes Candace to leave the house and go back together. Later on, she brings Candace right where Phoenix and Ferb are and follows her slowly just to make sure Candace can see what the boys are up to. Oh, that's but crazy. When they catch up with the boys, when they are in place right in front of the evidence, Linda casually happens to have a newspaper in her face, so she slowly throws away one page at a time. Once everything is <laughs> that's crazy. Anymore, Linda finally gets rid of the newspaper, sees that there's nothing there, and ignoring the massive hole in the wall, she brings Candace right back home. It's as if she needed something to happen. She needed action in order to have a story to tell. Yo, that's crazy. She gotta be doing some crazy shit. And taking advantage of every excuse she can, let's take the episode Mom's in the House. When Nupsinator accidentally creates a copy of the Flynn Fletcher's house, Candace thinks it was Phineas and Ferb's doing, so she tries to bust them for it, and she yells. Mom, get ready to have your eyes open wide! Linda ignores her, keeps her head down, looking inside her purse, and as she hears Candace go, but, 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 she understands that the thing is done, so she just turns, looks up, and says, oh, when are they ever going to build something in that empty lot? And she just leaves. One last example. In Bubble Boys, Candace is driving with Linda next to her and she's chasing her brothers down. When at some point the car is in midair after jumping off a drawbridge, Candace points at the boys floating inside the giant bubble. Possibly seconds after seeing the boys right in front of her, Linda immediately shuts her eyes and says, There! There! I told you! Hey, Mom, open your eyes! Not till we're back on the ground! Nah, that's crazy, bro. Anyhow, we should mention two pieces of evidence that could go against this theory. Like what? Or one is a cartoon, I mean. Corruption with Candace next to her and got mad at the boys for it. Still, both of them can be easily justified. The first time being in Phineas and Ferb's quantum boogaloo in an alternate timeline. Who the fuck is that? returned to the past and busted Phineas and Ferb on the very first day of summer when they built the roller coaster. But one might argue that the mom didn't know about their inventions that early in the summer, so she was harsh on them because she was afraid they might get hurt. That roller coaster doesn't seem that safe to me. Even though we know the boys did build stuff before that day, it was made clear that the crazier schemes and ideas happened during that summer. Meaning that the roller coaster might have been one of the first few instances in which Candace tried to bust her brothers. Therefore, Linda was actually clueless back then, and she had no intention to use her daughter's stories to her advantage. Yet, while in She's the Mayor, when Candace became the mayor, Linda got mad at Phineas and Ferb for building an old-time pioneer town in their backyard. But of course, since Candace brought the media and the press with her, Linda just couldn't play the innocent card anymore, not in front of the entire town, so she had no other choice but to bust Phineas and Ferb. Plus, I don't know, building the town, the boys might have messed up her beautiful garden and her beloved flowers, so I can see why she would lose it and blow up like that. Those timelines got deleted too, so that's one more reason not to worry about them when it comes to this theory. So there you have it. This is how Linda. Hey, bro, if you're the direction, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and more theory. theories, no cap.